Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's virtual plant clinic. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with Hernando County Extension, and I'm here today with my regular co-host who is way too into the uh, festivities of the season, <laughs> Lily. Uh, God, what are you guys doing over there today? Having a party or something? Well, um, Hernando County Utilities is having their holiday luncheon um, right after this at noon. So don't try to come pay your bill between noon and 1.30, I think. <laughs> they're probably going to lock the doors and make you wait outside till they're done. There have been signs cookies up. and whatever else. There have been signs up for a couple of weeks. So that allows our customer service people to participate, you know, um, in a relaxed manner. We tried it years before where they would, like, take shifts, and that's just kind of not fair. You yeah. Know, they have to stay a half hour. And then that let the next people come a half hour while the rest of us just kind of hang there. So, you know. Well, you know, at 1205, people are going to walk up and start banging on the front door. Well, of course, they, they bang on the door at 435. And, you know, <laughs> so. Uh -huh. And it, um, before eight, but. Good morning, buddy. Do you see my rain barrel behind me too? Is also in the uh, in this year's festivities. <laughs> my little mini rain barrel. Um, Did that used to be a keg of beer or something? Or I don't know. Carmen found it. <laughs> he found it at the landfill. <laughs> yeah, the stuff you find at the landfill. <laughs> and he said, "Hey, this would be a great mini rain barrel." So I took it home. And. Uh, my husband put the spigot on it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is just for the the decorations. Oh, they rain the barrel. Camera, yes, yes, it makes sense. When I'm looking in the camera, it's things are opposite what they really are. That's why it's hard to, you know, I'm looking for it over here, and it's over here. And this is my um, uh, another coworker. He just sits out there um, all season long, and he's. So squishy and comfy. I might go to sleep while we're doing this. And his orange outfit looks like it's the exact correct color to match everything. It's red. Christmas. It red looks red. orange on my screen. <laughs> he's got the Santa outfit because he's a good Grinch. His heart has grown. <laughs> See, he's smiling. <laughs> ready for the holidays. Well, I'm looking out the window right now, and even though it's 10.03 a.m., oh it is gosh. pitch black it out there. It is. I was trying, you know, I was trying to campaign for no one should have to work on a day like this. I know. I'm afraid to, like, walk out the door for lunch later if it keeps looking like this. It's just terrible. My husband is driving home from, well, last night he was just above Columbia, and he said it was raining and i said well guess what that's not going to change all day today it's going to follow you all the way down here yeah 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 then after that it's supposed to cool off some it's going to get chilly i don't think there's any real freezes or any you know major things coming good morning bob bob good morning how are you um here's a question um is there a transcript I can read? I'm hard of hearing. Can I can hear you talking, but I can't understand all you're saying. Um, well, if you're watching this on Facebook, it looks like you're watching it on YouTube. If you're watching it on Facebook, they have live transcripts. So as we're talking, it's sh showing the transcript at the bottom. Is that correct? I don't know. I'll find I do it. you know if you watch it not live if you watch it after the fact especially on youtube there will be closed captioned kept closed captioning um that happens for all of my youtube programs speaking of which i just put a new one on yesterday no the day before yesterday bill there's my 98th youtube video and it wow. is a florida friendly fast class so it's only 20 minutes that's as fast as we can get 
and um, it's on holiday plants. I do have a longer, more detailed program on holiday plants that I was going to give at Spring Hill Library yesterday afternoon at my allotted time. How'd that work out? Um, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else was. <laughs> so perhaps if there's an interest, I will also record the longer version, which includes some native uh, plants that, you know, that we don't think of as, as, you know, in our typical holiday plants and just more details. So if there's an interest in it, I can pre-record that and have it available as well. Bob is in okay. a tornado well, walk. Going back to Maggie's question, I have us on my phone right here. And if you watch us on um, Facebook, it does have live captioning. So as we're talking, they have closed captions at the bottom so that you can follow along a little bit easier. When it's saved on YouTube, I have to go back and like finish up and put the details in within anywhere from 15 minutes to 24 hours. The video has captioning on it also. So if you wait a day and you go back and watch any of our older uh, plant clinics, they all have closed captioning on them also. Mm -hmm. And Bob's got a tornado. Ooh. Watch where, where, where is your area? Where there's one spinning in the Gulf. Yeah, the whole the whole shebang is coming in from the Gulf. So. Mm -hmm. Maggie, I totally agree with you. Maggie says that uh, she's grateful for the rain because she won't have to drag their heavy hose about an eighth of a mile. Yeah. I won't have to go out there and turn the water on. Remember to turn it off, switch it to the other zone and turn it on and off for my vegetable garden because that's all I water. Mm -hmm. So rain is always welcome just because it saves me time. I really don't spend an awful lot of water on water for the vegetable garden. I think it makes a little bit of a difference in the water bill, but only a few bucks at worst. Mm -hmm. And it's probably um, you make up the money or it's worth it for you to have your home grown uh food so. yes have you seen that i've been posting pictures from my garden on no. facebook no well you don't follow our facebook yeah okay I didn't see that <laughs> i had a post on there about radishes the radishes i planted oh, about a month month and a half ago i've started picking they look beautiful i saw that um you said they're the easiest thing to grow they really are <laughs> see i did see it and I put one up there about either peppers or eggplants. I still have some of them because we have not gotten a really bad freeze. When we do, it will take out the eggplant plants and the peppers, what I have left, and I'll start more for spring. We have Facebook user saying hello. See that one? So. Yes. Oh, cool. hey, 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 quit that. <laughs> If Facebook user would like to identify their self, um, we'll, we'll greet you by name. Otherwise, hello. Well, if you're ever wondering about that, this is broadcast live to our face, office Facebook page, Hernando Extension, and my YouTube channel, and also our private gardening Facebook group. So if you're watching it through the group, you have to give Facebook permission to show your name on this broadcast. So for anybody who's hiding from people and you want to remain really anonymous but still make a comment, you could do it through the Facebook group, I suppose. Just remember we can we can uh, delete your comments. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can go back and delete it. And we could choose to not show the comment here live. So this hey guys, this is a family show. You know, keep it friendly, keep it clean. And Facebook user is Alice. So good morning, I assume Alice. Alice, the you know, I know five Alice's actually, so I assume it's the Alice I was talking to this morning. Or it could be the Alice um, who moved to North Florida, who was a master gardener. But uh oh, 
there's a tornado out in the Gulf offshore west of Hudson and it's heading northwest. So, Lily, what's northwest? See ya. I'm going oh, under the <laughs> 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 I'm going to put the Grinch on top of me. <laughs> northwest. Okay. We're east of there. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So well, if you're in a sturdy room, there. you're okay. Just put the Grinch over your head if the ceiling tiles come out. Actually, I'm in one of the. They say this is a safe room, which I don't understand that because it's on the second floor. So, I mean, I can safely surf down to <laughs> first floor. You're I'm safe from storm surge. Can you get well, storm surge where you are? Is that close enough to get storm surge? I wouldn't think so. Okay. If, if we get storm surge, then, you know, let's just call it Armageddon because all of Spring Hill will be underwater by the time it comes here. We're just east of the Suncoast Parkway. So my house will be gone. I might as well just stay here. <laughs> Yeah, because you're not too far from the Gulf, but you do have the whole Chasawitska preserved oh, between well, you, and that's a about, really good buffer. You were talking about my house. I thought you were talking about where I am. Oh, no. Well, I was asking about where you are right now at the mm -hmm. office. Now, my house is only, you know, maybe five miles as the crow flies. Um, it's just a mile west east of 19, <clears throat> but you're right. I've got, and thank God it'll be there forever, the Chasawitska wildlife management area preserve marsh swamp all that and that really does create a good mitigating buffer you know to capture all of that so i am thankful for that and speaking of such things let's go back to what i um questioned you about um the wikiwachi preserve just kind of like in the same you know, as far uh, west as, as far east as the, the Chaz, you know, as it reaches the rivers and then the Gulf. Mm -hmm. They have a Facebook page and there was somebody there who was taking pictures of wildlife and they showed dolphins, which was cool. Um, the dolphins had come up in the river, apparently, at which meets the preserve. But he uh -huh. also showed a chipmunk. And now I want to go to the preserve and go on a chipmunk hunt. <laughs> I have in 44 and a half years never seen a chipmunk in the state of Florida. I don't know. I've never seen one either. I've seen them up north. Well, yes, yes. Buddy um, might Buddy might want to maybe run across one, maybe in Tallahassee. I'm not I've never heard of one being in central Florida. So that is kind of intriguing to me. Yeah, well, we'll have to get a wildlife expert guest back on. Here. Yeah, yeah. Where's my boss when you need him? Huh? He's not around here today, so. I never saw any pictures of chip, of chipmunks from Jim either. So, unless there's just this pocket in the preserve, <laughs> preserving chipmunks, I don't know. I don't know. If Teresa was here, she hikes out there all the time. She probably know or have heard about it. She responded to the pictures you know with a like that's all i know but so interested is something to research um also i got a question this morning already on my email yeah grace yeah buddy says no chipmunks there in tallahassee gray squirrels are everywhere uh, same as here um i think i you know did some quick research and they said they might be able to be found further west like Pretty much Alabama, you know, Northwest, you know, we're yeah, Florida, yeah. Alabama, maybe. But who knows? What do I know? Maybe there is an isolated community in the preserve. Um, somebody. Oh, I bet you that's Teresa or Alice. <laughs> I think I looked there. I looked at that link and it talks about a county ad adjacent to Alabama <laughs> that might have. Mm -hmm. Some chipmunks. Off of the chipmunk um, issue, I had a question this morning asking if pine mulch was good to use. I like when I get easy questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <doing. laughs> so I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. sure. But I said, um, if they're getting it freshly chipped from somewhere to let it sit and season a bit, 
because you don't want to put it down green because as it's breaking down, it expends a lot of heat and a lot of energy and could be dangerous to your plants. Um, and I also mentioned to only use two to four inches and not to have it up against the trunk of trees or plants. And then I sent her the link to my, to Hernando County government YouTube and my class on mulch <coughs> about mulch. I also sent her the links to this program <laughs> to, to join us, you know, and start being a part of this. So. Well, we like it when we get questions by way of email with pictures because when we respond, we can send a link to a video of a class that we've given on the topic before. We can send links to uh, University of Florida fact sheets and a lot of really good support kind of material. So if you call us on the phone, a little difficult to do that, a little difficult for people to describe what their issue is. If you've ever talked to somebody trying to describe an insect or mm -hmm. what's happening with their plant, it's like, yeah, can you send a picture? <laughs> I'm yeah. not really sure what you're talking about here. Well, even when people call our water conservation line, and a lot of times they want to know, they may have new sod, want to know the new sod or new sod watering rules. Um, I'll talk to them, but I always ask for their email because that kind of information you need in writing, you're not going to retain yeah, yeah. it, you know, in your in your head so well i'm working on or working towards us getting a system to make it easier to answer questions collectively to have a uh, shared email account where all the emails whether they come to me or to mary or to Teresa or to the master gardener email it's all going to be one email it's all going to come in People are going to be able, our master gardeners can sit at home and answer emails also and try to get a, a better system going. That same person who asked about mulch was the person who asked me um, a water question. We've been getting water questions lately, but she said that, and here's the key word that she had her water tested by a commercial big box store. Let's just put it that way. And then they told her, you know, made her feel that she should worry about her water, but they talked about the hardness. Um, and but then they went mentioned the word impurities. And I asked her if she was on our system. I mean, I could see that she was but that wasn't necessarily the she may have had another property, you know, that she was asking about. So I was asking whether it was on a well or on our municipal system. It was on our municipal system. So I assured her that, well, you can go on our website to find water quality reports. You know, we can't, we are bound by law to have, um, you know, potable water so that we give out, um, that we distribute, but you can always call and ask for a water quality report, or you can look on our website if you know about where you live and which big well is yours, sometimes you can figure it out. You know, there's only a couple on the east side or or you can call and verify which one of these wells is mine and you'll see a water quality report. So it's not a matter of safety that this commercial entity was talking to her about. I told her most likely they want to sell you a water softener. Mm -hmm. All of our water in Florida is hard water. There's a lot of lime in it. So that is more of a personal choice. It has nothing to do with human safety, but if you like softer water or you can, or for, you know, it, it, that's more of a personal choice. Mm -hmm. But it seems like sometimes these uh, people can become confused that these companies are presenting themselves as a government entity or something when they're not. You know, so there's many times you have to be careful of that. Yeah, and you yeah. can have hard water and it's still perfectly safe to drink and and use in the kitchen and bathe with and everything else. Right. Now I told her if she has a private well, like I do, um, <coughs> that there is no regulation of that. Um, I attended a class <laughs> a few months ago with Dr. Lester and 
Dr. Yilin, Yilin Zhang. And as part of attending that class, we got our well water tested from the university. And for mine free. For free. And mine was and fine. It, she, she took it to a lab. It didn't go to UF. It went to uh, a private lab to get done. But you can call the Hernando County Health Department and call Environmental Health. And um, they will tell you how to take your well water there. And they will test it for you. So that goes under their purview. And wherever you live in Florida, if you're on a well and you'd like to get your well water tested for any pathogens, bacteria, and things like that, if you contact your health department, they can point you in the right direction, help you out. And if you get municipal water, no matter where you live, because we got a question a few weeks ago from Ocala, and you know, Lily and I are in Hernando County, so you know, <laughs> different counties, if you contact whatever entity you get your water from, they have that water report. And if you have a question or an issue with your water, you can work it out with them. Hopefully in a friendly manner. Yes. Oh, stop that. And we got a question from a new listener, either a new listener or maybe a stalker. Because I know that there's people that watch us and probably wait for a long time before they actually type in a question. Maggie Chili Beanie. I like that name. And she got some large rotating composters that are very, very efficient. All you have to do is turn the handle rather than wear your back out shoveling a compost pile. Yeah, they can work really well. There's a lot of options for uh, compost bins or piles. You know, if you got a bunch of stuff and you want it to compost, if you just throw it in a big pile in your backyard, it will break down. It's going to happen. Compost happens. Exactly. You can make a circle out of chicken wire to contain it, and it's going to break down. You can make something out of pallets with the pallet on the bottom and pallets for the side. Whatever, you can be as nice and extravagant as you want to be. We do have a composting program here in Hernando County where Hernando County Solid Waste Department, if you're a county resident, will give you a free composter and it's a hard plastic container, kind of bin, bin I guess, curved a little bit at the top. It looks like Darth Vader. Sure, it's like a little Darth Vader or a little... No, what is it? C three PO or what was the robot? No, 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 no. R two D two. The R two D two kind of. Rain barrels look more like R two D two. The okay. compost bins look like um, Darth Vader's helmet. Okay, Darth Vader's helmet. Yeah, that yeah, it does. That's a pretty good description. <laughs> or you can get the rotating ones that are up off the ground, and to turn them, you just crank a handle. The barrel. Spin. That's what they have oh, at wow. um, the schools. They have several of those um, at the schools, but the ones that we give out are static and you don't have to turn them. You And Bill usually explains that in the class. I mean, you can fluff them up, but you don't have to turn them in the, in the static system, the static cold composting system that we have. You might want to throw in some branches or something to add air pockets, that always helps. Um, so, it's, so that your bacteria does not revert from, to anaerobic from aerobic. You want aerobic bacteria. See, I've listened to you long enough. Very good. You've been listening, haven't you? <laughs> yes. Because, because aerobic, aerobic bacteria breathe, they need oxygen, and they break things down, and they generally don't get really stinky things get stinky, that's excess nitrogen being spun off as ammonia in the atmosphere. Which is what happens in your septic tank. Yeah, okay. and we're supposed to get our septic pump this morning. Oh. And it looks absolutely horrible outside, so hope the guy has a raincoat. Yeah, and that's something that some people don't know if they're not used to a septic system that you should do um the two of you two i'd say every four to five years oh no we do it like every two because we don't want things getting plugged up okay and our unit between the tank and the drain field there's a screen 
and the screen will plug up. And they told me that I could dig it up and pull the screen out and just wash it off with the hose. Bill's not doing that. No, 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 no. Bill's not. Bill's doing not that. doing that. Bill has to handle the black water from his RV. That's that's enough. Huh? <laughs> yes, which which isn't that difficult. Just wear gloves. You're right. You know, it focus on what you're doing. Should stay contained. Yes. Yeah, you got you yeah, got to so, focus. You got to focus on that stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> but with getting your tank pumped is kind of a function on how big your house is, because the bigger your house, the bigger the septic system by law they have to put in when they build the house, and the number of people living there. It goes by bedrooms, actually. Yeah. We have next door neighbors, and they're very, very nice people. And it's a small two bedroom house. And that, you know, they had an appropriate septic tank put in years ago when the house was built. The problem is there's eight of them living there. There's mother and father. They have twin girls. They have an older girl. Then they have the oldest girl. She has her little baby with her. And they have their mother in law move in. Okay. Eight people in a two bedroom house, they fit. But that tank is going to have to be pumped frequently, maybe even more than once a year. So they had to plug up and they had to get the drain field replaced, which oh. isn't cheap. Mm. We have a question here from George. Okay. George asks, I planted in my yard 16 22 inch pots with native plants about two weeks ago. When should I fertilize the mulch? Um, when, it come, when it comes to mulching, you should, you can and should mulch lightly right when you plant them. So be right, careful. Don't put them. too much mulch down to where the mulch is going to suck up the water for those new plants. And it depends. When you say native plants, are you talking about hollies, you know, shrubs, or are you talking about wildflowers? Wildflowers don't. They want to go to seed and reseed or even a spreading um, ground cover like sunshine mimosa. If it's too much malt, it has nothing to grab onto. But I would, you can lightly mulch it, um, but don't put mulch like at the, you know, where you put the pot <laughs> in the ground, where you put the plant, you know, um, right around there you know the, the potting soil that was there leave that empty or open for now so that when you mm -hmm. water it that water is going to get to the plant not be sucked up by the mulch like a sponge as far as fertilizing there's no real reason to fertilize native plants ever but right now you don't want to fertilize anything correct Dr. Correct. Dr. I mean, you could fertilize them lightly. Native plants don't need a lot of fertilizer. But I wouldn't do I, it now. I wouldn't bother until March, right. spring, when when everything starts growing again. Because um, fertilizer is going to induce new growth. And, <clears throat> well, first of all, don't fertilize any new transplants. Let's, let's back up. That transplant has to put all its energy in its root system to get established. You try to fertilize it and take its focus off its roots and, you know, give it some nitrogen or something. So it's got a, going to shift its energy into leaf production, which is very stressful for an already stressed out plant that has been transplanted. So you don't want to fertilize any new transplants for several months. Another thing is this is December. Let's not fertilize anything and encourage that new growth, which could be uh, sensitive to frosts and freezes. So when they come, yes. So I would leave them alone, like he said, till mid March, April. If you want to give them yep. some fertilizer, native plants are are native plants. <laughs> God isn't fertilizing them, <laughs> so. They'll probably be okay without it, but give them a little, it won't, won't hurt, but wait till spring. Yeah, and just keep them reasonably well watered while they're establishing and spreading their roots and getting settled in. Mm -hmm. If it's dry, and it usually is dry in Florida over the winter and into the spring, 
and you should be fine. Native plants and drought tolerant plants need just as much water to be established as any other plant that's out mm -hmm. there. It's after it's established that it will, um, you can let nature take care of it from there. And our native plants right out in front of our office are getting well watered right now because it is literally pitch black outside and coming down in buckets at the moment. I don't have a window, so I don't know. <laughs> My studio does That's why yours is a safe room. No windows. Yes, yes that must be it. Okay, you're welcome, George. And hey, if anybody else has any other questions, anything you want to try asking us or discussing, just go ahead and put it in the chat. We're, we're open to a wide variety of lawn and landscape and water questions and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And Maggie Chili Beanie has another question. Mm -hmm. As an aside, I buy or sell those tiny fine mesh bags used for party favors at weddings. I'm not crafty, so I can't do that. Then I tie them lightly but securely over the seed heads. Rain doesn't collect and they catch all the seeds. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I know that with our native plants that we have here at our office, plants out front, all of our landscaping we converted to native plants to use it for a demonstration garden for when people come by the office. The flowers and the plants, after they flower, they set seeds. Mm -hmm. And one of our master gardener volunteers has been collecting the seeds out there. He's got a ton of them. If you get one dune sunflower, gallardia, whatever it might be, and start saving the seeds from it, you can get a lot of free seeds very, very quickly. Yes. Um, do leave some out there open, though, for the birds and stuff to, <laughs> to have some food. But yeah, so even if you're not collecting the seeds, if you leave the seeds and, you know, for the birds, they're going to really appreciate it. And for native plants, as a general rule, most Florida native plants are going to go dormant during the winter. Some flower and some keep growing and some keep looking good. Most of them are just going to kind of go dormant. They're going to die back a little bit. We get a freeze. They turn brown. You might be tempted to go out there and trim them all back and get it all cleaned up so it looks good. Try to leave it as is for as long as you can because those seeds benefit birds. The hollow dead stems benefit beneficial bees. insects. Bees. There's a yeah. lot of good things that all that brown debris does. Yeah. And when, yeah, um, there's movement all over the country, probably all over the world, um, telling you don't clean up your flower beds for fall. Let them go for the winter. If you have to clean them up, you know, tidy them up, do that in the spring. But in the fall, they're providing, just like they would in the woods, um, food and shelter for insects and birds and all kinds of, of wildlife. So yeah, and you, even if you can wait help. to remove the dead stuff until well into spring after the plants perk back up, started growing, because then, you know, if the plant starts growing in March, by May or June, you know what's not coming back to life. If it's still brown and dead, it ain't coming back. So you're going to have to trim it off at that point. So try to try to be as patient as you can be before going out there pruning the heck out of everything. I'm glad Sean is getting those seeds because he and I both have in the back of our minds a another garden project for another entity. But we're kind of waiting for other people to prepare the space by, you know, um, Roto tilling or whatever, you know, it's been like a year now, <laughs> but hopefully he, he'll have some nice plants to put in that, that space when it ever happens. Okay. And George asks about joining the master gardener, um, program. So George, the best way to get started with that and begin the if, process. If you're in is, Hernando County. Is shoot me an email. If you're in Hernando County. If you live in a different county, you probably want to contact the extension program there. If you have no idea where they are, who they are, who's in charge, if you email me, I can find out for you who's in charge of the Master Gardeners in your county, if it's not Hernando, and we'll get you set up. I'll get you connected with the right people. So, mm -hmm. so let me... 
throw my email address back on there. For anybody who hasn't heard this before, the best way to get in touch with me is by email. How should we get in touch with you, Bill? I'm glad you asked, Lily and Mr. Grinch. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, today I'm here at my office. And you can see all my nice diplomas and stuff behind me because it looks oh, yeah, really you just, good. You're just showing that. off. Just showing off, Dr. Lester. Okay. I'm not showing off. You know you got lots of pieces of paper, okay? <laughs> they gave me the front large office, which is kind of nice because it's large, which means big bare walls, so you got to put something on them. <laughs> that way I can catch people as they walk in the front door, which I'd rather be hidden in the back some days, but that's okay. <laughs> but got to put something up on the walls. I am here at the office, but just a couple days a week. Other days I'm working remotely. I I didn't tell you I had to go to j and Ranch yesterday and teach homeschoolers no, in the morning. I they knew have, it was because um, I heard it from Jeff. <laughs> yeah, they have regular um, groups of people coming to tour their, their farm there. And Matt Smith would normally help with that, but he's in the Virgin Islands at a conference. Oh, nice man. for Matt, which I must was. Be tough, yes. Yeah, it must be tough. <laughs> so I went and filled in for him. But it was great, great fun. Um, does Henry like hot peppers by any chance? No, but I do. Oh, you do? Okay, well, I'm, we're planning on going back to J&G on Saturday. They have tons of jalapenos and hot peppers. I'm going to get them, and I'm going to can them. I'm going to make something called cowboy candy. Whoa. If any of our listeners have ever heard of that, it's supposed to be really, really good. So I'll give you a jar if it turns out well. He, he used to like them, but, you know, sans gallbladder, they're, they're not fun for <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know some people like hot peppers, but hot peppers don't like them. Mm -hmm. Yep, we have a couple of good questions in the lineup here. Yes, we do. Bob asks, any new herbicides for Caesar weed? Nothing specific for Caesar weed. So any right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Caesar weed is a broadleaf invasive <laughs> plant. So obviously any um any herbicide that kills everything. So think like glyphosate, uh triclopyr, any kind of broadleaf weed killer will kill it, but it kills any other broadleaf plant that it hits. And then if your problem is, let's say, Caesar weed in your lawn, that really shouldn't be a problem because if you cut your lawn, you're always cutting the Caesar weed before it gets very tall. So you I never have a big problem. Caesar weed is like on at the edge of woods and mulch piles and stuff like that. Never sure, seen, open areas, that. huge problem in wooded areas or um, border areas, border along a wooded area. You've got it at the nursery. We have everything at the nursery and, you know, we need to do a class and a video probably at the same time on invasives. If you look real close, we got everything out there. <laughs> we got them all. I'm, I guess I should be embarrassed to say, but we have them all. We, it is at the edge of a wooded area and we have all kinds of invasives there. So Stephanie, Good morning, Stephanie is from South Pinellas County. That must be nice because you are technically, is South Pinellas in zone 10 now or? Um, I don't know, I'd have to look at the, I, did, I only paid attention to Hernando. Yeah, she, if, if you're close she, enough to the water. East. Yeah, oh she, no, um, yeah, Pinellas, <clears throat> yeah, because of it being its own little peninsula off of our peninsula. It was in 10. Yeah, it was warmer. Yeah, Stephanie says yes, zone 10. Yes. I'm jealous because you can have mangoes. You can have all kinds of tropical fruit down there. You can have lychee trees and I not have the blueberries. Die and you got to cover them and keep them warm. But Stephanie is asking about planting blueberry bushes. And she says she's getting mixed messages about them. Some say they're easy. Some say not so much. What are your thoughts? They are not easy. We, we can tell you that. They are not easy. 
they are not easy. They don't just because they have they can grow them commercially in Florida doesn't mean you can buy blueberry bushes and just plunk them in your backyard and they're going to grow. They're fussy. They need very acidic soil. Like pH 4.5, which is very acidic. So you can grow them in a container with a lot of peat moss because peat moss is acidic and organic. That works. If you're going to grow them in your yard, get a soil test, find out what your pH is. If it's 6.5 or above, don't bother. Your plants will never do well. You may be able to keep them alive. They're never going to do well. Um, and when you get far enough south, after a certain point, you don't get enough chill hours, even for Florida blueberries. They grow down as far south as about Sebring. So, Lily, where does Sebring line up with South Pinellas? It's right across from it, isn't it? Close to it. Yeah. Um, Let me check. But if you look at the blueberry farmers, like you were out at one yesterday, if you look closely, those blueberries are in very tall mounds of pine bark. They're not really growing in our ground. And to get that, and sometimes to get that magic low pH, this is getting into some, you know, more detailed training, but your pH numbers, wherever they are on the scale, sometimes if they get too high or too low, will block out certain nutrients. So I know, I think, isn't nickel an issue with low, you know, you don't get enough nickel with lower pH. I know some of the blueberries have had 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 to have some nickel um, added to them, and then there might have yeah, been yeah. more on, and it was all a big balancing act. Yeah, nickel, the only plant I know that really needs nickel and uh, benefits from it is um, a tree, um, river birch, uh, I know river birch trees. The blueberry Believe it or not, farm. that's trivia. I thought it was nickel that they had to add to it. Maybe um, there was too much. There was something to do with nickel and boron at the same farm where you went to, but I'm talking about 20 years ago. <laughs> so. Oh, um, where I went, their blueberries all died years ago because they flooded really bad and it had a huge outbreak of Phytophthora, okay. which is root rot. And that killed all the blueberries. And they battled it for a long time. They've come back and they've been able to replant blueberries. But if we look at the old map here, here, let's. Here's let get that. Let, this is just going to have to be a regular segment. Okay, it's time for map time here at the virtual plant clinic. Can you see my cursor? I can. Okay, we are up around here, Spring Hill, Brooksville, and blueberries grow fine here. We get enough cold weather generally in the flood. winter. They're going to flower. Ocala, they do better. Mm -hmm. uh, Gainesville, blueberries go great, grow great up there. And then North Florida, north, they do fantastic. The blueberries are not going to be a problem. So if you look about the furthest south, you can grow them, I think, a Sebring-ish. So that's just a little bit south of Frostproof, Lake Wales. And if you go to the coast, that's around Pinellas County also. So Okay, so Sebring is further north than South Pinellas. <clears throat> yeah, and there is there is not a line. There's just kind of a general zone. Right, so right. Definitely, you're at the edge of blueberry world, basically. Mm -hmm. You can probably grow southern high bush blueberries if you want to try if you're going to try growing them in the ground and you don't naturally have really low ph get a big attractive container to grow them in and you can give them a shot but like i said during a warm winter your blueberries might not get enough cold so in the spring they're going to get lots of flowers 
right at the same time when they get their little baby leaves out. So it's going to be mm, borderline. Does she need a different type? If she gets a southern high bush, doesn't she also need like a rabbit eye hanging around? Southern high bush, well, for there's two different type, major types of blueberries. Southern high bush, which is what all the commercial people use, and rabbit eye, which are older varieties that they grew years ago, but they still grow well and they can be very productive. For homeowners, rabbit eyes are easier because Southern high bush is bred to flower very early in the spring. And Lily, what happens here when we have a late freeze or frost? Oh, that just happens over very early in the spring, can happen April 3rd or sometime. Uh -huh. yeah. So here, if we have a late freeze, you're going to lose all the blueberries off your southern high bush plants. So you're not going to get blueberries. That on top of battling the birds, it's, it, 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 you know, if you want to take on the challenge, go ahead. But there are. Yeah, no bird, birds are a totally different story. But we're just yeah. to talk about cold. Yeah. Southern high bush is bred for further south. It does flower very early. But there's a good chance Stephanie really does not have to worry about a freeze or frost at all, depending on exactly where she lives and the exact weather for that winter. So to recap, uh, what are your thoughts on growing blueberries in South Pinellas County? Probably worth giving it a shot, but we can't guarantee it. And then keep it in a pot. I wouldn't suggest putting it in your, you know, um, you're surrounded by water as well, and you probably have pretty high pH. Um, I think, is she referring to how the um, how the closed caption showed the word we were saying? We were saying Caesar weed as yeah. in a tu brute, you know, as in Julius Caesar. <laughs> as in the Roman emperor Caesar. Yes, yes. And that is an invasive plant, not native to Florida. It flowers, it gets pretty little pink flowers, and yeah, butterflies and bees do visit the flowers. It gets sticky little seeds. They're cut, they're round, and if you bump up against it, they'll stick to your clothes. And it is in the same family as cotton, yeah. hibiscus, no, and okra. That. It looks like cotton, the flowers do. And yeah. The leaves do, yeah. There's a little insect that is a pest for cotton. It's called a cotton stainer. A bull weevil. And when it feeds on cotton, it poops all over the cotton and stains the cotton balls. That's how it got its name. It's really rumbling outside right now. We're getting some serious thunder and it's getting even darker. So in case I disappear, nothing personal. It's because yeah. of thunder and lightning and internet. But uh, cotton stainers, feed on Caesar weed also, I found them on it. And okra, same family. Hibiscus, same family. Hmm. Oh man, I heard your, is that thunder? <laughs> so the Bob backs up to a and Yeah, Bob backs up to a conservation where area. That is where weed. you're gonna find lots of Caesar weed it loves, and lots of other invasive plants. Loves the border of woods for some reason. Yeah. And here we have a question about the Darrow's blueberry bush that somebody got from the Hernando Master Gardener Nursery. Do you want to answer that one? No, I don't even know. Oh, okay. Can. I know there are native, um, you know, vaccinium plants that are going to have, I, I don't know if that's what that's referring to. You can yes, walk around the woods that's... and find blueberries <clears throat> here, um, but they are probably they're really small blueberries and there's more stone than blueberry flesh around it is that is that the answer there yeah well darrow's blueberry and there's uh a, they go by a number of different names there are native species of blueberries that are native to central florida and if you go for a hike out in the woods they're out there you'll find them and Birds eat the little blueberries. Animals eat a very, very important source of very, food for native wildlife. Yeah, they, they have stones in them. Um, they have pits. And they're also very, very grainy, those 
wild native blueberries. I mean, you, if you have them, you have them for the pretty cute little jingle bell flowers and yeah, for yeah, yeah. the native, and, um, the native, you know, benefit. And the, I'm sorry, the wildlife benefit. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're a very attractive, durable um, native plant, also. And they do get actual little blueberries. They're very small. They're always sour. Yeah. Well, what they did was they took them and they crossbred them with the kind of blueberries that you grow up in Maine that get nice, big, tasty blueberries. And they end up with blueberries that get big, tasty blueberries that grow in Florida and they're low chill. So that's where we got all of our different varieties of blueberries from. It's different crossings between those two. I but, um, have eaten, I've eaten a couple in the woods, um, totally on faith believe it or not, that Dr. Stacy Strickland was not trying to poison me. <laughs> and you know why? Um, I knew because he gave some to his daughter as well at the same time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I tried them and yeah, they're very grainy and they've got a big pit in them. So, yeah, animals yeah. and birds like them, they're not mm -hmm. really tasty. But a little follow up question here about that. Um, the pH issue with them. Yes, the native blueberries need acidic soil to do well also. If you're out hiking in the woods and you go to a pine sand hill area where pine trees have been growing there for thousands of years, you're going to find the soil is pretty acidic. And blueberries do great there in naturally acidic soil in partial shade. Well, let me so tell you a story. Though, if you're thinking you'll be able to lower your pH, because your key words there were thousands of years. Um, I once certified a yard uh, as Florida friendly. And the yard was in a very, very shady community. Literally <laughs> shady community. Lots of oak trees. Not, not you know. Not that not part of town. Not the other meaning. Okay. And so it was a mobile home community. And so it was a fairly smallish yard. But rather than fight, you know, where he was, he didn't have a lawn. He had lots of different plants that thrive in the shade. But what he used as a lawn or a ground cover was what he had, which was oak leaves. And I would say there was eight inches of oak leaves, you know, and... There was no reason for it not to pass as Florida friendly because he had the right amount of plants and, you know, all of that. And part of getting your yard certified is you have to have <coughs> a soil test done. So I was very interested, you know, with his six, eight, you know, inches of oak leaves as his ground cover, not to mention the uh, all the oaks around. I mean, I don't know. It looked, almost looked like he shellacked them because not a not a leaf dared to move out of place. It looked very neat there. So I was very interested in those test results. Do you want to know what his soil pH was? Six point oh. five. Yeah. Yeah. So those oak leaves would have had, and you know, before he even started doing that, you know, there was a good cover because the ancient oaks were over the area as well. So it literally would take thousands of years to significantly lower the pH with oak leaves or pine needles or something like that. Yes, so because they're both acidic, but it takes a long time for them to actually move the soil's natural pH mm -hmm. down. But if you live out in the country and way out back, you have an area where there's pine trees and you figure it's been a pine forest for ever forever yeah for a very very long time good chance that you're going to have naturally low ph soil which means there's certain things that are never going to grow really well there but you could grow blueberries and azaleas and other things like that so azaleas it's azaleas will do fabulous yes mix of good and bad no matter what your ph is there's certain things you can grow and other things that you shouldn't even bother trying to grow well that area um even though it's on you know, miles away from the farm that you refer to is also a flood zone. So that could be part of why, you know, if the water goes quickly through the soil, maybe why 
pH was never really changing. Yeah, and, and I mean, it gets washed out a lot, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that could have an impact also with changing the pH. Elemental so, sulfur will change it for a month, maybe. <laughs> A light scattering of elemental sulfur will lower your pH for a couple of months. So it works well in, let's say, a vegetable garden, but it doesn't work well long term because you end up having to put so much sulfur down, eventually you're going to throw your soil chemistry out of whack and end up with too much sulfur, which can be toxic. Too much of anything can be toxic to plants. So, And all that being said, don't cut, move down here and continue your routine from your northern yard don't throw lime down on your lawns uh, um, unless you need it the, you know where the lime came from in that bag that you bought it from our soil <laughs> most likely from a mine here in florida we have plenty you don't treat it like you know you are up north you don't need to quote quote sweeten our soil here I have told everyone I haven't had to do it yet that if you get a soil, if you get a soil test done and it comes back for lawn, never alert. Uh -huh. I it Why am I not getting it yet? I don't know. Um, if you get do a soil test for a lawn and it tells you to add lime, send it to me. And I will eat a bug on air. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> okay, well, well, given the fact that uh, we're getting uh, tornado warnings. That was a tornado Hill, warning. I haven't gotten that. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, Nora, maybe Nora just forwarded me, and this was it, it was in effect until 1130, and we're after that. My computer at the little bottom has a little icon now that tells you the weather. It says tornado. Oh, cool. I've seen that before. It has a little woo. <laughs> yeah, a little, little swirly. <laughs> I don't have that. So I'm safe. And hey, my front yard is filling up with water, apparently. But I live in Spring Hill, and it's very sandy. So as soon as yeah. it stops raining, that'll disappear really quick. So, <laughs> And you know... Lily, I need to get a hold of you and ask you about those big equalizer boxes that I have in my front yard. Mm -hmm. I think it's plugged up. Okay. I need somebody from the county to come out there and fix it. I am not the Department of Public Works, but I can give you the phone number for them. <laughs> what, your department doesn't handle that? No, that is the Department of Public Works. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and knock up. Hey, it's, we're just about pretty much right on time, so let's go ahead and knock out one more quick question here from maggie chili beanie is it possible to buy acidic soil in a bag uh at a garden center never heard of it yes and no there really isn't acidic potting soil or garden soil but peat moss is very acidic so if you buy peat moss and mix it with your potting soil like if you want to grow a blueberry, if you get a big, big decorative pot that can go on your porch or by your pool or backyard or wherever, make it like half quality potting soil, half um, peat moss, that should work out well. That's going to give you an acidic mix. So I don't know of any, you can't go and buy acidic potting soil. I've never seen it labeled that way. I wonder, or why. That way. I wonder if it doesn't you know, store well and retain its acidity or something. Interesting question there. No, um, I don't know why you can't yeah. buy it. You would think that a company would have thought about it and sold it. Want to go into business? <laughs> That's a thought. <laughs> yes. That's a thought. So <laughs> let's go ahead and if anybody has any other follow-up questions, well, you can more than welcome to shoot me an email because hopefully all of you know at this point that the best way to get in touch with me is through email. And if you have any really, really difficult questions, send them to Lily. There is her email address. 
put those two L's in the middle or it won't get to me. That's the biggest mistake that people make. Uh, and she can help with plugged up storm drains and whatever your problem is. I sure can. I can tell you the phone number of the Department of Public Works <laughs> Storm Water Division. And <laughs> we already have one mention of the Darrow native blueberry. If you'd like to purchase them, our master gardeners do have a nursery. They're open on Wednesdays and Saturdays from 8.30 in the morning till noon. They are closing some as we get closer to the holidays. I'm not sure. Well, here. Well, just remember those there. native blueberries are for, they're basically ornamentals and for wildlife value. They're not for you to make a blueberry pie. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, they're not really, I mean, they won't hurt you, but they're not very good for eating. Right. So our nursery will be closed on December 24th, Christmas Eve, December 28th, and December 31st. So keep that in mind. Why the 28th? Straight off this morning's email. <laughs> so run out there. What? When, what is next Wednesday? Or Saturday. Go out there Saturday. Get your last minute Christmas um, plant. I mean, they don't have classic Christmas plants, but get some nice plants. Your wife wants plants for Christmas. I promise you that. <laughs> plants she can plant. Yes, the plants will make very, very thoughtful Christmas gifts. Um, and let me go ahead and, oh my gosh, if I can make it open here. Okay, well, I'm fighting. You got your survey link up there? Yes, I did. If you are watching this either live or recorded on Facebook or on YouTube, whichever it might be. If you give me just a half a second here, I'll go ahead and put it in the notes or the comments. So Maggie, I guess, is looking for the Alachua County Extension Office. You are so lucky you've got the whole university right at your, you know, disposal there. Where is the extension office in Alachua? They just moved. They're in Newberry. They built a new office there and just opened just recently. So, so just um, move the things, Bill. <coughs> but I don't have handy any kind of overall list. So if you have any questions like that, you need to find out where your extension office is. Just shoot me an email and I can go ahead and help answer that one. And Word is not working, so I can't open oh. and do anything. Must be must be the tornado that's blowing through, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm only what we're only what four miles apart <laughs> and I'm not being told anything about a tornado. Of course. It's sounding really quiet outside this door. <laughs> so again, I may have been left. It just got quiet here all of a sudden. So no, I mean in the building. I don't hear oh. it moving around or anything. <laughs> well, you're in a safe room, so if the door flies open and people come piling in, you can take that as a bad yeah. sign. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah there's a picture of the pool. There's water in the pool. Yeah, well, of course there's water in the pool. It's outside. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, Lily, will we both be back here next Thursday? What is the day? That is next Thursday. <laughs> yes, I will be. Let me look at my calendar. December Thursday 22nd. the 22nd. Sure, why not? I'll be here. Because we're all off the next day, the 23rd, correct? Correct. Okay. And the 26th. And then I'm off even longer than that because I deserve it. You're always Because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so, yes, thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. We'll be back here again next Thursday.
So if you have any questions between now and then, go ahead and shoot me an email, send a good, clear description and lots and lots of pictures, and we'll try to figure out what's wrong. Otherwise, save it up for next Thursday at 10 a.m. We will be back here again, and we need to try to get a guest on next week. He always says that. He's not gonna, you're going to bring Santa? Is that who we'll have next week? Sure. The university will probably be closed, so you're not going to find anyone. No, no, no. The day before a really long break like that, yeah. I've learned there's no point emailing anybody at the university. They're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> they all cut out the day before that. Yeah. And if you've ever gone to the University of Florida campus up there in Gainesville, it is a zoo between traffic and building new buildings and everything else. Parking lots are always full, really difficult to get through. So many people walking in on bikes and scooters and everything. Go there right around Christmas. Or in the it's summer. Almost, it's <laughs> eerie. No, because summer, they have summer classes. It's generally okay. pretty crowded. Go there right either before or after Christmas, the week between Christmas and New Year's. It's almost like something out of a science fiction movie. So if no you want to go to lot, the um, there. Museum of Natural History up there, that's the time to go. Yeah, and you know, there's probably a few people there, but if you just drive around campus, because mm -hmm. I had to go there and pick up books or pick up something once before, it's like, oh my gosh, now I know when I'm going to come up here every year. <laughs> yes, yes. So, hey, guys, thanks, everybody. We're going to go uh, and try to figure out if there's a tornado coming or not. And until then, Mr. Grinch says have a great week, and I say have a great week. And Lily, you have a great week, too. And we'll all see you back here again next week. Bye, guys. We'll be here.